May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Have you seen her? Have you seen wisdom? Have you seen Lady Wisdom? Guess not, or not yet. The late Rosemary Radford Ruther, theologian and feminist scholar, wrote this. Wisdom is seen in all the encompassing divine ground of being out of which the Trinity emerges. It creates the world, guides it to perfection, and unites the creation with the creator. Wisdom is the ground of being of the three persons of God. In the message translation of the Bible, I'm going to share with you a different uh, account, if you will, Proverbs 8 that was read earlier. Do you hear Lady Wisdom calling? Can you hear Madam Insight raising her voice? She's taken her stand at first and main at the busiest intersection, right in the city square where the traffic is thickest. She shouts, you, I'm talking to you. Everyone out here on the streets, listen, you idiots, learn good sense. You blockheads, shape up. Don't miss a word of this. I'm telling you how to live well. I'm telling you how to live at your best. My mouth chews and savors and relishes truth. I can't stand to taste evil. You'll only hear true and right words from my mouth. Not one syllable but will be twisted or skewed. You'll recognize this is true. You with open minds, truth, ready minds, will see it at once. I am Lady Wisdom. I live next to sanity. Good counsel and common sense are my characteristics. I am both insight and virtue to live it out. With my help, leaders rule and lawmakers legislate fairly. With my help, governors govern. Good sovereignty made me the first, the basic, before he did anything else. I was brought into being a long time ago, well before Earth got its start. Day after day I was there with my joyful applause, always enjoying his or God's company delighted with the world of things and creatures, happily celebrating the human family. Wisdom shows up in this third year cycle C of our lectionary. Wisdom only shows up this time and then is an option for the Easter Vigil. And it's Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday. So did you send or receive a Trinity greeting card? Have you grown tired of hearing all of those Trinity hymns? They're everywhere. The stores, the elevators, restaurants. Do you anticipate having someone ask you, did you have a nice Trinity? Probably not, no to all of those. So although Trinity is one of the seven principal feasts of the church, it is a struggle for some to comprehend. For some, Trinity Sunday doesn't seem to carry the same importance as the other days. It's much easier to wrap our minds around All Saints Day. Christmas, reinforced by the culture, Epiphany, the light, the wise men. Easter, reinforced by the culture, 
Ascension Day, and last Sunday, Pentecost. And then today, Trinity Sunday arrives with a bit of a fizzle. Maybe because it was made by man. Made by man during a time when there was a battle to find a definition of who these newly forming followers of Jesus would call God. Jesus, son of God, not part of Judaism, not part of the Roman or Greek gods or the Egyptian religion, and then there's what's to do with the Holy Spirit. If it could only be as easy as three in one oil, lubricates, cleans, and prevents rust. <laughs> Plain, simple, easy to use. Or something like water, steam, and ice. So, who do we need to hold responsible for this doctrine? Doctrine of the Trinity. We can credit Athanasius, born in the latter part of the third century. In his mid-twenties, he got involved with the deb debate surrounding the divinity of Jesus. He was present for the first ecumenical council at Nicaea, and is credited for this phrase of one being with the Father. Athanasius became Bishop of Alexandria at the age of 33. Or we could give credit to Basil the Great, born in 379. He became Bishop of Caesarea. He vehemently supported the inclusion of the Holy Spirit, having written this, it is impossible to believe in the Father and the Son without the presence of the Spirit. He who rejects the Spirit rejects the Son, and he who rejects the Son rejects the Father. Athanasius and Basil, along with others, fought to bring clarity to what they believed. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit stood for. They carved out a much needed theological path that kept at bay heresies that threatened the truth. The doctrine of the Trinity did not become integrated into the liturgy until the 10th century, though. So I would like to suggest that this teaching of the church is akin to icing on the cake, the cherry that sits atop whipped cream. In a way, Trinity ties everything together, but not necessarily with shiny bows and ribbons and a pretty box. Trinity can be humbly defined as God. We want to personify God as father or mother. I like to say creator. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Its most credible biblical foundation is located at the end of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said to the remaining disciples, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. When we skip over Trinity, we miss, miss the important opportunity to further solidify, deepen, or wrestle with our faith. The Nicene and Apostles' Creed are so familiar, particularly the, the former Sunday by Sunday, that the significance may be lost. So I offer you an affirmation from daily prayer for all seasons that expresses Trinity this way. We believe in God, the creator of all life and beauty, who blesses our journey. We believe in Jesus Christ, who lived as a friend and savior to all he met as he traveled, and who ate and laughed, wept, 
and celebrate it with them in love. We believe in the Holy Spirit who rides on the gentle breeze, who strengthens our bindings, and who offers hope eternal. We believe in the church, which stands open to all travelers and bears witness to the everlasting love of God. Undergirding this affirmation in our creeds, or is wisdom. Wisdom calling on the street corner, whispering in your ear. And from Proverbs 3, happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding. For her income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her feet are called happy. Wisdom, or Sophia, is the feminine of God. Not getting a lot of attention in our lectionary, in our readings of the scripture, realizing that most of the scriptures were written through the lens of men, and it was not acceptable for the voice of women or the concept of even the femininity of God to be promoted. But God, with wisdom there from the beginning, delighting in the human race, is quite a profound statement to ponder. Wisdom with God from the beginning. We may ask, does wisdom still delight in the human race? Or has she been scared off or given up? We shall think not and hope not. In these perilous times, giving up may be the choice of some. Turning a blind eye, the choice of some. Wake me when it's over, the choice of some. But through all generations, God has given God's self the great mystery to God's people. God has given God's Son, Jesus Christ, to all people. God has given the Holy Spirit to all people. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So in times in which we live, the question is, what will we contribute to creating the change we would like to see in our day? What will you contribute? What will I contribute? What will we do? So we don't go this alone. So we have the Trinity. Setting Christianity aside from the other religions, how easy it is for us to say there's just one God and we're all bound together by the tenets of love, which is true. But for the Muslim, Jesus is a prophet, a good person. For the Jewish people, Jesus, a good person may be fictional. So although I can't quite explain it, if we're steady in our belief that God came to be with us and took on flesh, that Jesus died and rose again, defeating death, and left for us the Holy Spirit, it's not the same. 
It's not the same. So we're called to live life where it meets us today, right now, to fill your heart with hope and live. Walk with wisdom, listen for her voice, still there, wanting to guide and direct and be with you on your journey. Don't be afraid to say yes to wisdom. Don't be afraid to say yes to God, the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid of the mystery. Accept, believe, and live.